for you. Woohoo! Is ready for some girl chat. Ooh, so ready. Chat. Check this out, fam. First up, the New York Times is reporting that parents are laying down one biggie rule when it comes to their babysitters. No social media. Woo! Parents are even going yeah. as far as to make their sitters sign contracts in an effort to make sure they're paying attention to their kids at all times. And to make sure they obey their contract, many parents are narking on their nannies, taking <laughs> secret pictures of them using social media to call them out later. So ladies, do you think babysitters need to get off the gram? I think while they're babysitting, yeah. you know, someone else's child, absolutely. Because I know personally for me, when I'm looking at Instagram, sometimes you go down the rabbit hole and you're not really focusing on what you should be focusing yeah. on. So if you are babysitting my child, I need to have all eyes, all ears, all limbs, you know, on my children. Because yeah. anything can happen. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of people think it's a safety issue. I want to take it a step further. Um, my sister is super strict about this as well. Anyone that ever cares for children, which most, ma mainly is like family members. Yeah. She doesn't want them on the gram because she doesn't want you just making sure my kids are okay. She actually wants you to be interactive yeah. with your children. Like some people think babysitting means hand a kid an iPad and I sit here and scroll mm -hmm. and just make sure the kid doesn't die. But I would want somebody to take care of my children, actually play with them, read to them, take them to a park, have conversations. Yes. Uh, you know, you know, like how right. you would do, Lonnie. Right. right. You know, well, get on first the floor, of all, play with the kid. Well, first of all, it's a job. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're not on, we're not on the Instagram on our jobs right now. I mean, a regular person that does like a regular nine to five does not, you know, it's not on their phone all the time. So you have to look at it as babysitting is serious and it's a job. Yeah. That's so I, I get that. And know? I'm actually, as as a parent, because a lot of kids are addictive addicted to those things, as are the parents, I'm making a conscious decision to stay off of it when I am around my yeah. kids. Mm. One, teachers are actually saying that um, their cognitive learning abilities are actually being affected by these phones wow. because they want easy, quick, you know, uh, stimulation. Yes. They're overstimulated. They don't have patience with themselves. Mm -hmm. And also, it is developing chronic dry eye. Kids are going in to their eye doctors and they're saying that the kids have the same chronic eye dryness as a 40-year-old. And they're like six. So that tells you there definitely, you know, is a problem with these devices. Yeah. So we have to be careful. Yeah, I would even take we do. It, yeah. I would even take it a step further. I love what you just said, that if the kids aren't being played with or taught something, then they should be engaged with and stimulated in some way. And let's just say they're taking a nap or something or they're out, you know, at yeah. school. Well, then you help the mom. Do something around the house that's gonna help the mom out. Cook right. a meal, yeah. clean, right. yeah. fold some laundry. Yeah. There's always something to do not at work. Yeah. yeah. I think if you do, you know, I think if you are a babysitter or, you know, a hired professional, you, you have breaks. That's the time yeah. you can check your yeah. phone and stuff uh, like of that. Course. But, and you know, nappy, just to be on it 24 7, it's just, that's, it's a job. So yeah. act like it's a job. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, take it you know, real lives here. Exactly. Yeah. Well, your babysitter is definitely gonna be distracted if they keep getting dumped. Okay? Okay? Mm. <laughs> and when you go through a tough breakup, you don't want to do anything. I mean, especially go to work. Uh, recently, the ladders.com published an article that asked if it's actually okay to call in sick after a breakup. What? Yeah, um, this writer, Linda Lufan, believes that calling out sick depends on two things. What kind of employee you work for and what kind of employee you are. Mm -hmm. While your employer hopefully wants what's best for you, a great employee shouldn't abuse the trust because taking too many days off could negatively impact the company. So ladies, do you think being love sick is a valid reason to miss work? So they're saying, you got a breakup, I need a day. I'm <laughs> with you guys. <coughs> I think this is completely unacceptable. That's just my opinion on multiple levels. What? Where, where have we gotten to a point where a man has such control over your life that you can't function enough to go to your job that pays for your livelihood, your home, your... Guys, we're taking this too far. I get having a broken heart. I get that it hurts so bad. But sometimes I actually think even going to work can maybe be a distraction for you. Something that you can put your mind towards that gets your mind off of the, per the pain and the hurt that you're going through. But I think you have to think about this. If you are currently in a relationship and when you just imagine not being with that person, taking you out, like it knocks you out to the point where you cannot function and get up to go to work, something there is not healthy and you need to get that in check. Yeah.
Well, yeah, that's I, scary. When I worked as an engineer, we did have mental health awareness days. So, like, you could take, like, if you know you needed, like, a break. A day. Yeah, a, a day. So, I mean, that would fall under that category because all breakups are not the same. I mean, it depends on how hard the breakup... You know what? Like me, I break up with somebody every two weeks, so it's... <laughs> you know, I'd yeah, be like, like, I need a day. This actually kind of... <laughs> this happened to me. Really? Uh, I had someone... Yes, I had. I don't want to put her on blast because she's, you know, she's she's really good. Who are you talking um, about, me? No, 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 oh, no. Oh, no. okay. Um, she had broken up with her her boyfriend, and the thing is, is she just wasn't as effective. The you know that particular day, she was like Eeyore, like. Gah, gah, gah. And I've been there. I've you know I, I'm not a great breakupper. I just made up a word, but I I didn't I didn't know how to handle that well. Jesus. So, I, but I'm. I am aware that sometimes I'm too kind. You know what I mean? So she, I just didn't want to be around that energy. Did you energy. talk to her about I it? I did is talk she... to her about it. And I said, because I heard her on the phone, and I was like, oh, God, I don't know if I want that energy around me right now. Why don't I give you the day off? Yeah. If you can't get yourself together in three days, then this isn't going to work. Dang, that's hella yeah. nice. That's yeah. what happened nice. in the breakup. Jennifer Aniston got sent that's, home. She that's did? Really nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess... <laughs> I mean, the only major breakup I can think about, you know, to relate yeah. to is my divorce. Uh, and that's the biggest kind of breakup you can yeah. have. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Maybe, yeah. you know, you need a little time. Right. You know? Well, maybe... Well, and you would think that I did, but here's the thing. I knew that if I sat at home, I know myself well enough, right, that mm -hmm. I would wallow in it. I would d absolutely mourn in it. I would mm -hmm. start to self-shame and self-guilt mm -hmm. and all these things that your mind, when it's, it, it's, it's free, it just starts to go into those yeah. zones that maybe aren't healthy for me. Yeah. So honestly, coming to work, reminding myself that I worked so hard to get to where I am right now, filling myself with great supportive people, you guys, the real fam, laughing, and then looking at that paycheck to take myself out on a okay. date by myself yeah. to make myself feel better and move on, that's strong J. And there are some jobs that you can't take off. I mean, yeah. you know, and we wouldn't want them to take off. So it's like, you know, if you got to get yourself together, try. I know with being, um, you know, we're all contractors, our own self-contractors. Yeah. If I have a comedy show, I can't take off. So there have yeah. been plenty You'll of times in my life. You'll get tickets were sold. Yeah, yeah. They, I'm like, that breach of contract will hit your ass. I'm like, woo! <laughs> I'll be there telling the jokes, you know? Yeah. Heartbreak and telling jokes, yeah. you know? So you just have to find a way to cha channel it, especially if you really depend on, if you need the money, depend on yep. your job. Don't let something like that get to you. Get your money, okay? Okay. Get, okay. Money. get it. Some might say you might want to say you're sick instead of you have a broken heart. Um, well, that's what we were talking about. Like the lying. mental, yeah. you could take a mental break. Yeah. Now, like, I will you know. say this. There is a difference, and if you really, really feel like you're not okay, it is okay to go get help as well. I don't yes. say just stay home yes. and just don't go to work. Go speak to somebody, go get help, because yeah. depression is real. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if that's what's happening, that's completely different. I want to make sure that we're clear that we're not saying, oh, you're being silly. If you really feel that, then again, it's not a question of do I take off work. It's don't just stay home and not go to work. Go talk to somebody. Go Find get help. Find help. Yeah. yeah. Professional help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, from broken hearts to broken rules, one mom recently found herself in the middle of some daughter drama after she told her 19-year-old that she would not be allowed to sleep in the same room as her 23-year-old boyfriend. <laughs> Posting to the site Mumsnet, the concerned mom said that while she's grown to like her, boyfriend, her daughter's boyfriend, she likes him, she and her husband aren't comfortable with them sharing a room while visiting because she wouldn't have been allowed to do so at her age. So, while some users saw where she was coming from, others pointed out that her daughter's an adult and should be able to make her own decisions. So, ladies, do you think mama knows best here? What do you Dude, think? <laughs> if it's your mom and she's paying the bills, it's her house. You follow her rules. I feel I'm, like if you're so grown and you don't like it, go to a hotel because yes. you're so grown. Yes, exactly. or move and find your own place. You're, you're technically an adult after 18. Yeah. But when you have your parents home, you, you, got, you got to follow those rules. Respect. Yeah. I was a rebellious teenager. I remember, like, I, you know, had boyfriends over, like, at 14, 15. I remember it made my parents uneasy. And you should never make your parents feel uncomfortable in their house. Did you they know? say anything? Yeah. I remember one time I was watching TV with my boyfriend at the time. And I was, like, maybe 14, 15. I was lying. I said he wasn't my boyfriend. But, you know, you're doing the thing. And we were both lying together, just on the couch like this, just really close. Mm -hmm. And my dad, who's so nice, my mom would have called me out, but he pulled me. He said, you know, which means, like, come here. 
pulled me into the room and said, I don't feel comfortable. Why, why, why do you lie like that together at home by yourself? Makes mm. me, you know? And just seeing my dad feel so awkward telling me that made yeah. me feel wrong about making him feel like that. He's the man of the house. Yeah, yeah. still yeah. to this day when my mom or my dad come to visit and I'm with my husband, I just, and I'm a grown woman, I'm oh. 40 years old and I've been married for almost eight years, I still feel a little weird and I'm married and I'm grown. But I agree with you, I'm a true believer of if you're in your mom's house, you have to abide by your mom's house. I hear that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that at 19, there's other things you should be worried about than having your boyfriend stay at your house with you. I mean, 19, you, you should be worrying about your, your career or education. Yeah, yeah. You worry about, I mean, you know, it's like, to me, that's just young, and it's and it's still to me, nineteen is still it's still teen. Yeah, yeah. it's still a teenager. Yeah. So I mean, it, people kill me with this. She grown, and you need to let her. When then she, she need to do it outside of my house. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, that's and it. Obviously, the big question is here if they're being sexually active, right? Like yeah. you know they are sexually know. active, and he's standing <laughs> okay. there. Exactly, and that's why like... she has a problem with it. And again, my thing is, it's only like what two or three days, I actually think it can be sexy to like stay separate for a little bit. You're like, okay, oh, yeah. good night, give him a kiss Create on the cheek. That tension. Create that sexual tension going on. You gotta sneak around maybe. Yeah. This is all good, but again, I think it goes back to the same thing you guys are saying, which is respect your parents' household and your yeah. parents' rules. Yeah. If you're so grown, you're getting it at home anyway. You can survive for two yeah. days. Yeah. I will well, say do like we used to do in the old days. Do that? it in the car, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It can make it interesting. We used to go sneak, you know, and then come back yes. and act like we ain't did nothing. Uh -huh. like... <laughs> Hide in a closet, the laundromat. So you yeah. guys, I have a question, though. Do you yes. think it would be different if it was your own child? So if it were your daughter, in, in, in your son. I know I would still be the same. For me, I wouldn't be able to sleep. No, really? I, no, I would be too nosy. I would be listening to everything. Really? I'd go, oh, wait, what? And if I did, I wouldn't, I would feel uncomfortable. I, I just, I couldn't do it. Oh my God, if no, you were I me, would pay for I'd the, take the off road. my designer not, belt, that wait. girl would have an LV stamp <laughs> on her booty so yeah. quick. <laughs> I yeah. have a question though. Yeah. What if she's married? If she, of course, if she's that's, married, yeah, that's, that's fine. But I still be would listening? be like, oh my God, did I hear anything? I don't know. You're like, my kid is doing it <laughs> yes. in the room yeah. next door. Yeah. Can you I... see Tia with a little glass yes. up at the... <laughs> yes, I can. Yeah. I want my children to have healthy sex lives. Yeah. So while I think any parent imagining their child having sex, that's just gross. That's like us thinking of our parents having sex. Yeah. Ugh. Oh. But I... Ultimately, I'd be happy that they are having a healthy sex life with okay. their yeah. husband, yeah. wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, but you gotta be careful about that, there. that letting them yeah. live in, cause then they start, they get comfortable. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, got it. For you, you know what they eating your Fruit Loops and yes. stuff. You know, you just gotta have oh, some rules. Oh, like if you let them move, would you let your kids live with their significant other in under? my house? Live? No, 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 no. Never. No. Even if they fell on a hard time. Uh, I would give them, you know, uh, an end date. Okay. I would say you have. 30 days to get your <laughs> life together. And then I'm changing the locks. Yes. That's I what hear I that. See, I like how Tam does this hardball. I feel that.